My name is Brittany Taroli, and in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to properly use a Gauss meter and a transverse probe. The very first thing you need to make sure of is that you are in a non-magnetic environment, which means no metal tables, no metal jewelry on, including watches, and no other magnets or magnetic materials around you. The next thing you need to do is to connect your probe. But be sure that your Gauss meter is turned off first, because if you connect a probe to a Gauss meter that is turned on, you can ruin your Gauss meter. Once you connect the probe, hit the power button to turn it on. It's gonna take it a couple of seconds to warm up. Once it turns on, you need to make sure that you zero your probe. So you're going to take a zero Gauss chamber. You're going to put the probe all the way inside and then hit the zero function and give it a couple seconds to zero out. Once it is zeroed, before you do any testing, you need to make sure that your probe is calibrated each time. So to do that, you are going to take a pre-calibrated magnet, stick the probe right inside, and the reading on your Gauss meter should be the same as the reading on your calibrated magnet. After that is done, you can start choosing the functions on your Gauss meter. You have AC and DC. You always want to choose DC for permanent magnets. Your units can be in either Gauss or Tesla. And your range can be on auto range, or you can switch it to a selected range, depending on the type of magnet that you are testing. The very last thing you need to know before you start testing any magnets is where the Hall element is located inside of your probe. Some drawings for magnetic materials will specify a certain Gauss or millitesla value at a certain gap from the magnet surface. It is important to understand that this gap is not between the magnet surface and the surface of the probe. Gauss meter probes of all types have a sensing device called a Hall element buried inside the plastic structure of the probe. In almost all cases, this element is protected and therefore cannot be seen. Its position within the probe must be found by looking at the drawing supplied by the probe's manufacturer. In this case, the element is 1.75 millimeters away from the end of the probe. Therefore, when this drawing asks for a testing gap of 3 millimeters, it is actually 1.25 millimeters away from the end of the probe. If you are testing with the flat part of the probe facing the magnet, then you will also need to know the location of the sensing element within the thickness of the protective housing. All reputable Gauss meter suppliers will have details of the sensing element and its location within the probe. If you have a Gauss meter and do not have a drawing of the probe or any information about the sensing element location, you may contact the equipment supplier or send your probe to us at Alliance where we can determine the centerline location of the Hall element within the probe. Once you have found where the Hall element is inside of your probe and have chosen your functions on your Gauss meter, you can begin to test your magnets. On this example, I have a cylinder magnet that is magnetized through the thickness. If I want to test the field on the top of the magnet, I would place my transverse probe perpendicular to the top like this. If I wanted to test the gauss going from one side of the magnet to the other, I would put it flat against the magnet like this. And then in this example, we have a magnet that is multiple pole on the face. So in order to test the gauss between the two poles, I would hold the transverse probe flat against the magnet like this. And then we have a ring magnet over here that is magnetized with multiple poles. So in order to test one of them, you would have to take magnetic paper, you would find your pole, take your transverse probe and hold it flat right on the middle of one of those poles. However, because a Gauss meter is very sensitive to the placement of the probe, you would need to use a fixture to hold your magnet in place so that it is the same distance away from the probe to the pole every time. If you would like to know how to use a axial probe with a Gauss meter, please visit our website for an instructional video or call us at 219-548-3799 and we'll be happy to help. 